Now more than ever, we have an opportunity to be a positive force in the world, to help heal the divide, to treat each other and ourselves with respect. But with so many tools out there from meditation to physical training, proper nutrition, therapy, and so many others, we all need a little help navigating all the options. Join us as we share in-depth information, insights, and thought-provoking discussions that will help answer your questions about how to stay calm, cool, and connected during these times. Welcome to Calm, Cool, and Connected, your guidebook to peace of mind. Hello, and welcome to Calm, Cool, and Connected. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth Bedrick. One of the most tragic aspects of divorce when children are involved is the impact this can have on the quality of co-parenting that takes place after the divorce and even during. And many divorces become contentious and strained and thus take a significant toll on the divorce couple's ability to effectively interact and communicate around the needs of the child. Joining us today is Leslie Hope Holtoff, an author and divorce and co-parenting coach. Leslie is here to share with us about her journey through co-parenting and to offer some suggestions to work towards healthier co-parenting. Hi, Leslie. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you for joining us. So before we jump into the interview, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and and the work that you're doing around co-parenting. Great. I'm a divorce and co-parenting coach, so I kind of have two different types of clients. Um, A lot of them are going through a divorce, but many of them have already gotten divorced and are in the just moving forth with co-parenting stage, and I help them communicate better with their ex, improve their co-parenting skills, and connect better with their kids. Okay, so that sometimes can prove to be pretty difficult, That, especially with all the different personalities that take place. And there's often so much history that comes along with divorce that can also make that complicated. And you have a story of your own around co-parenting. Is that accurate? Is that how you got into doing that work? It is. Um, I'm the oldest of three girls. My parents were married for 45 years before my dad passed away, and no one in my family had ever been divorced. So when I got divorced uh, very young, I was had two kids and was divorced by the time I was 26. I had no idea what co-parenting looked like. Um, I had a couple of friends who maybe saw their dad every other weekend, and I, and I knew that's not what I wanted. So um, I struggled with co-parenting for years. We did every combination, you know, we did every other weekend, every two or three days, we landed on every other week. We changed the day that that fell. I mean, it was, oh my gosh, just stumbling for so long before we landed in a place that felt as comfortable as you can ever be. I think, um, splitting 50, 50. Absolutely. And so where did your desire to then start coaching in this area come from? Um, it's funny. I actually was in real estate. I flip houses. And then several years ago, I love doing that. I still do it on the side, but I just felt like I had more to give. I just wanted to connect with people on a more personal level. And it, I finally, I studied psychology and I'm actually working on my PhD, writing my dissertation on joint shared custody. And it finally was able to take all these ideas and the things that I learned from co-parenting and, and getting through my divorce. And I said, you know what? I actually think there's a lot here that I can share with people and save them a lot of time and heartbreak that I had to go through the good old fashioned way. Um, and I actually thought I invented divorce coaching. That's how little I knew of it before I jumped into the realm. Um, but then I realized that there, that is actually a profession and it actually has been around for a while. So I was able to get certified and really jump into it. And it is a need. There's been lots of people who've reached out to me. And again, some are in the divorce phase. Some have been co-parenting for, for years. And then sometimes things change and something just goes south. Often, you know, one of the par- one of the parties remarries or, you know, there's some life change um, that really kind of puts a kink in things. And, and you just kind of have to reevaluate. And, and it changes anyway as kids get older. And what are some of the most common barriers that you see when it comes to co-parenting? So even the healthiest of co-parents, you know, what are some of the struggles that come up most often? Well, one of the things is actually kid related. A lot of my clients have problems with teenagers, (laughs) you know, like they don't know if the animosity they're getting is normal teenage angst or is it because of their parenting or is it because they got divorced and they're in this co-parenting situation. So so that in itself is a challenge to look at. And then it, it's communication. I mean, that's the truth. And, um, you know, when you get divorced, it's like, here's this person that even if you're going to be friends with them later, you're really not friends right now. And you have to pretend to be for the sake of your kids. And a lot of people get carried up in the emotion of that. And they want to communicate their, you know, they get the text message and they're, you know, like right away. And 
it's bad. Um, so as a co-parenting coach, a lot of times I say, look, you got this email. I know you're angry. Let's draft something together that's actually productive. And we'll sort of take all this rage and emotion out of it and really focus on the kids. Yeah, which I mean, is such a, a such a good approach to that. And I often tell my clients who I work with on this particular issue that, you know, they at one point did like each other for some reason, right? They did, they felt connected, they enjoy each other on some level. So where can we tap into some of that and look at some of the good of, of what once did exist? Do you find that to be likely a pretty big struggle for a lot of your clients? It is. And it's something I work on directly with them. You know, when they're telling me this horrendous story about what happened with the kids last weekend, I'm like, okay, but your ex did feed them, take care of them. They were safe, you know, or, or whatever it is. We try to really break it down and go, okay, so actually the problem is this. How can we address this so it makes sure it doesn't happen again? How can we do this so it doesn't feel like you're policing your co-parent, but it feels like you're really reaching out and saying, hey, I'm hoping we can meet in the middle on this because I'm uncomfortable with it. And, and that's, you're able to talk through that. That is a step that really does help. Right. What are a couple of the most effective tips that you can give for somebody listening? Um, let's talk, let's break it up. So somebody who's maybe just now starting to go through the divorce process, getting, heading into the paperwork portion of it, the decisions around co-parenting, what is maybe a piece of advice you'd give for them? Oh my gosh, please get a good team. Of course, you're going to need your lawyer. Everybody knows that your financial advisors, you know, all that stuff. But I highly suggest a divorce coach. I highly suggest a counselor, therapist, somebody that you're going to be able to reach out and talk to when the emotions are just overwhelming and just slow down. You don't have to respond to everything right away and really take your time to to think it through and focus on your kids. Yes. Being aware of giving your power away can be a really big thing um, throughout the process, but especially early on when it's all fresh. And what about somebody who's maybe a few years into their divorce and they're still struggling with co-parenting decisions? What type of help do you provide around that? Um, I think it's important that that both parties note that things change. Just whatever you came up with two to five years ago might not work when they're teenagers and that you are constantly going to have to review that. I always say my parents were married for 45 years. Sometimes I couldn't wait to hang out with my mom. Sometimes I couldn't stand my mom, vice versa. You know, there's almost always one parent you feel. So co-parenting is not a divorced couple's realm. It's all parents and mm -hmm. it will change and allow that to happen. Allow yourself to weave and flow. Sometimes they're going to need their dad more. Sometimes they're going to need their mom for it, and don't take that personal. Yeah, that's that's a great piece of advice on that. And you talk about respecting the other house, respecting mm -hmm. what's going on when the child's in the other home. Can you tell us what you mean by that? It's so important. I, you know, I my ex-husband and I had very different views on what your day-to-day -day life looks like when you come home from school. But the bottom line was, is the homework being done? Yeah. Is it better to do it at the same time? Of course it is. But that is not that big a deal if they're coming home and playing before they do homework at the other house. Like, you really have to pick your battles. And, you know, what's important, again, is the child getting enough sleep? Are they eating? Are they safe? You know, once all those are covered, you can have conversations about how everything else looks. Yeah. And that is so important because when you try to micromanage something that is outside of your circle of control, your ex-partner's home, that often becomes just really frustrating and overwhelming for the it's person doing battle. that. It's a losing battle. But there are ways to communicate better where you can try to make it more um, easier for both of you to deal with and, and adjust to. And the kids and there, will see you trying that. Absolutely, which is so important. And I was just going to say, is there anything that you suggest that is specific to the kids for, for each parent to be doing that is specific to the, the safety and well-being, emotional safety and well-being really of the child's experience? The most important co-parenting tip I ever give is you have to consider that to your child, their other parent is a part of them. So anything negative that you say about that parent, your child is going to take personally. So if you wouldn't say that to your child about your child, don't say it about their other parent. And that yeah. in itself will give your kids a peace of mind and support. And if you can get through that, and if you can learn not to say bad things about the other parent, then you've got a lot of hope. So crucial that children really are the extension of the parent. So that's a great insight. Where can our audience find you online, social media? Where can you be found? Um, LeslieHopeCoaching.com. Leslie Hope Holtoff is my, you know, I'm on Twitter. I'm on all the good stuff, Facebook, uh, Instagram. But the website is the best place to connect and find me absolutely everywhere. And I, I try to post blogs weekly with different tips. So please log on. You can subscribe to our newsletter. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Leslie. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I've, I've loved it.
And thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Calm, Cool, and Connected. Please make sure to find us on Facebook and Instagram, and also make sure to rate and subscribe to our podcast so that others can discover our content as well. Thank you again for joining us on this episode of Calm, Cool, and Connected.